right, all right. Welcome to the Dead Man Horror Show. I'm your host, Mr. Dead Man. And tonight's program, this particular episode, is going to be a little grim, a little weird, obscene, very strange, um, which they've all been, right? I've received feedback about these episodes, and the feedback is, Mr. Deadman, where do you find these stories? How do you find this stuff? What's your search history like? You don't want to know. I'm pretty sure I'm on the FBI watch list, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything anymore, because who's not on that? Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, we're talking about a very specific Karen Margaret Greenlee. A woman who has an insatiable lust for the dead. And I'm t- we're not talking about one dead body, two dead bodies, five, maybe ten. I'm not even talking about 37 dead cocks in a row. I'm talking about over 40. Over 40 dead bodies this woman has, uh, has, has ridden or some way had um, intercourse with. Uh, it is... It is very bizarre. It is very strange. But despite all that, oh wait, 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 huh? Need a, I have a copy here. Need to read. Have an ad. Need to read. This show gets sponsored. This show is sponsored. Sponsored by BetterHelp.com. <laughs> no, not true. But sponsored by. Hey, do you happen to have something in your trunk and it needs to be buried? Do you happen to have a large bag that is going to smell if not disposed of properly? Do you happen to be in a situation where you might have hit something on the highway and uh, no one knows about it? That one, that one, there's going to be a, hard, a large fee and they're really going to need to know. Actually, that I'm going to tell you, that one, they rarely come forward on. But everything else they're good with. I don't know. I have to say legally, I don't know firsthand. But I will say, I will say. They're very helpful if you're in a, in a bind and need something buried or disposed of. You just contact Midnight Grave Diggers. You go to MGD.com. Use the promo code DHS for Dead Man Horror Show 2023. And you get 10% off, okay? Might ask 10% off of what exactly? 10% off of the price that could pinch, potentially save you, okay? All right? Now, they're not lawyers. They don't have a legal... well. For additional charge, they could actually help with that. But, you know, it depends on what you're willing to spend. And I don't think the discount actually applies on their legal services. But that's Midnight Grave Diggers. We can dig it. They can help you out if you're in that sort of bind. Now, let's get into this here. Karen Greenlee is a freak. She is a sex fiend. And I think you could say that without anybody being like, oh, don't slut shame her. I mean, we're talking about 20, over 20, near 40, over 40 dead bodies. Okay, dead body. I think by after one dead body, having sex with one dead body, you could say she might be a fiend. She might be a fiend. It it, it fits. The label fits there. So I don't think anybody is going to be upset with calling her a slut for the dead. She's a slut for the dead. She's a whore. She's she's a whore for the dead. Literally is. You see these horror hots or horror thoughts, I should say. These horror hotties, horror babes on Twitter who pretend, who role play like they have a lust for the dead. This chick, this chick, Karen Greenlee, which there's no good image of her, okay? The, the best thing I have I could put on this, if you're listening to this on the podcast form, you're not missing out on much. I could describe it to you the best way I can. And that is, um, first, let me, let me find this here. The image I have on the screen looks like Imagine Dave Mustaine with black hair and near a coffin that looks like it has rats in it, okay? Not a very good-looking woman, okay? But then again, she doesn't have to get dolled up for for, 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 her, for her particular type, right? They're not going to judge. The dead's not going to judge, okay? They're already stiff and ready. Okay, but let's be serious here. This is a real thing to happen. Real people, uh, I guess real corpses have been violated by her, so we've got to take this seriously. I'll take it as serious as California took it because she wasn't even convicted. She wasn't even convicted for necrophilia. You know why? Because the great state of California, that wasn't even all in the books. I guess they didn't think, 
someone could be banging dead bodies or uh, who, oh, it's a dead body. Who who would really care? Oh, someone's gonna care. People do care. This chick was sued for this stuff. She was sued for this. So how did this happen? Well, the news broke. The news broke uh, because of uh, her own activity, her own actions here. Um. During a well, let me tell you this a little bit, a little bit more about Greenlee, her past, what she did. So, she worked as an embalmer, an apprentice embalmer. So she had plenty of access to corpses. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. If you're gonna be into necrophilia, you're gonna work at a morgue. You're gonna work at a mortuary. That's where you're gonna work. Like if you're uh, into necrophilia, into banging dead bodies, you're gonna be around them. Just like how if you are into kids, you're gonna be a teacher. Kind of like that sort of thing. It, it, it makes sense. I'm not saying all teachers, but you know, there's always that gym teacher or English teacher. There's always weird things. I'm just saying you want to have ready access. So she had ready access. So she worked at a mortuary in Sacramento, California. In 1979, sometime around there, I think December, she stole a Cadillac. The story goes she stole a Cadillac hearse. And she was driving to a private burial along, uh, driving to a, a private burial and in the, in the hearse, obviously there was a 33 year old man, uh, he was in there dead, obviously had died a week before. And instead of actually going to the funeral where she was intended to go, she saw the departed's family. And then did a big donut and took off. So imagine you're there with your family. You're waiting for the hearse to arrive with the body, with the with the person that, that you're all there to mourn. But the hearse spins around and drives off. It's like, what in the world is this? What in tar nation is going on here? That would be more like a Texas thing right there. But, well, they find. They find the hearse. It's not hard to find a hearse. They they They... Are easy to spot, but it took a couple days. Uh, I don't know if you caught that. That was a big burp. I don't know why. Very, very unprofessional there. But I don't know why it took a couple days to 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 spot a hearse. I guess it was on a, a road no one really uses that much. Of course, we are talking about 1979, and the technology is not that there. But isn't hey? Wasn't it the same time we went to the moon around that time? Right. Anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> It took multiple days for them to find a hearse. Okay. All right. Uh, but when they found it, they found her inside, Karen Greenlee. Uh, she had tried to overdose on Tylenol and codeine. So they had to pump her stomach out. And they also found a four and a half page long written confession. A confession in the hearse. Like, so she confessed. So I guess she felt so bad about what she did that she decided this is it. I'm going to get caught. They they saw me turn around and drive off. My time is coming near. Let me try to OD myself off myself so that way I don't have to face the repercussions of having banged. And in the confession, that's where she admits to having sex with 20 to 40 other dead bodies of what she says young men. Young men. You might be like, how young? We'll get into that. We have a news thing to get into that there. But um, young men, and she called it an addiction. She was addicted to dead bodies. She couldn't quit it. She was addicted to necrophilia. Imagine that. That doesn't, how does that even register? How does it make sense? You know, people are addicted to all sorts of things. Addicted to cigarettes, addicted to booze, addicted to heroin, addicted to meth, addicted to all sorts of things, you know? But addicted to Banging dead bodies. How does that even, how does that even become a thing? How does that even become a thing? But it did, apparently. I can imagine someone in the comment section will be like, the one person, be like, don't slut shame her. Karen Greenlee was a saint. Like, no, <laughs> no one would say that. <laughs> no one would say that. Um, hmm. And uh, like I mentioned before, I got to remind you uh, that she wasn't convicted for necrophilia because necrophilia was not illegal in California at that time. I don't, I'm not sure if it's illegal now. I'm just saying that it wasn't then. 
But she was accused of stealing a hearse and interfering with the funeral, which she pled guilty and was sentenced to a $200, $255 fine, spent 11 days in jail. Wow. Seems pretty light for over 20 to 40 counts of what would be like rape, right? I mean, it's not like a dead body can, can consent, Right. But I guess they can't they can't say yes, they can't say no. So it's kind of ambiguous. What is it? What is it there? If it's if it doesn't have a pulse, does it even matter at that point? I mean, you let me know. Um, <clears throat> gross. Um however, she did serve probation. It was uh, uh she had mandatory therapy uh where she could try to make peace with what happened. Of course, the family of the body that was intended to be buried, they sued her. They sued for $1 million. But the mother of the victim, uh, that would be the plaintiff there, uh, she ended up settling. They ended up settling for, I think it was like 117000 So, there's that there. But what I find interesting is really what we can get more out of this, some interesting details, is there is an interview with Karen Greenlee. She had an interview in this uh, anthology, a horror anthology, not like the ones I used to publish, but this one, these are really intriguing, called Apocalypse Culture 1987. That's when it was uh, published. The, the, I want to get a copy of this I really do, because some of the stories in it are just very outright bizarre and perfect for this show. But the interview, I'm going to start reading it here. It was uh, done by Jim Morton. The interview goes like this. Karen Greenlee is a necrophiliac. Five years ago, she made national headlines when she drove off in a hearse and wasn't heard from for two days. Instead of delivering the body to the cemetery, she decided to spend some time alone with the corpse. Eventually, the police found her in the next county, overdose on codeine, Tylenol, and was charged with illegally driving a hearse and interfering with the burial. In the casket with the body, Karen left a four-and-a-half-page Letter confessing to omerous episodes with between 20 to 40 dead men. The letter was filled with remorse over her sexual desires. Why do I do it? Why? Why? Fear of love? Relationships? No romance ever hurt like this. It's the pits. I'm a morgue rat. This is my rat hole, perhaps my grave. The letter proved to be her downfall. For stealing the body in the hearse, she got 11 days in jail, $255 fine, and was placed on two years probation with medical treatment recommended. Meanwhile, the mother of the dead man sued, claiming the incident scarred her psyche and asked for $1 million but settled for $117,000. The press had a field day, lawyers got rich, and Karen lost her career and source of sexual satisfaction. Karen is now more comfortable with her sexuality. And when I wrote the letter, um, she goes, <clears throat> when I wrote that letter, I was still listening to society. Everyone said necrophilia was wrong. So I must be doing something wrong. But the more people tried to convince me I was crazy, the more sure of my desires I became so in short, that therapy, and I'm not reading this part, this is just my commentary, that, that therapy that was recommended for her, did it help? Absolutely not. She just solidified her, her perversion, her, her kink. Don't, don't kink shame is probably what they talked about in therapy. So the following is, is the interview here. So the interviewer asked Jim Warren asked, Back during the trial, from what I read in newspapers, it seemed like you got very little support. No, none whatsoever. The newspapers were 
the worst. To this day, I hate reporters. One of them even compared me to Richard Trenton Chase, the vampire killer. What support there was was likely family obligations. One of my brothers refused to have anything to do with me. He said, I just want to remember her as she was. He came up to me later and apologized, but he still isn't comfortable around me. My other brother was more supportive, but even he had to ask, why did you do it? Before the trial, I had a boyfriend, she says, she said in, in this interview, who found out about it. He got mad and slapped me around. He said I wasn't even a woman and I could go fuck my dead bodies. I was surprised. I was surprised. He knew. Apparently a lot of people knew and I didn't know how they knew. I'm going to take a pause right here. I'm um, not reading this here. Actually, for those listening to the podcast, that's why I tell you that. For those watching this, it's either going to be on the screen when I'm reading it and not on the screen. I'll make sure that's on the screen when I'm reading it like this. Boom. Okay. But, uh, yeah, um, how would you react? i got to ask, how would you react if you found out that your sister, older sister, younger sister, uh, news brought out, broke out that she has been having sex with dead bodies, multiple dead bodies, a dozen, over a dozen. Um, it's, it's, it's weird, right? It's, it's, it's kind of gross. It's a little gross, right? <clears throat> anyway, back to this. <clears throat> With guys, they always felt like I want or went for the bodies because I was hard up. And if I went to bed with them, then that would change me. And they would be the one who would give me such satisfaction. I wouldn't need those old corpses anymore. I've run into that a lot. Sometimes that guys come on to me just for that reason. Oh, okay. Not reading anymore. Uh, uh, commentary time here. What a shame. What a shame. Imagine that news broke out that you have sex with dead bodies. And people were like thinking that you're kind of a freak. And maybe, maybe you need that one flesh and blood, someone with a pulse to satisfy you, to change your world, right? Not <laughs> the, the whole pity me thing in this interview. Not buying it. Not buying it. You know? Okay. It's it's kind of rich, isn't it? But there's an interesting part in this interview where she talks about the where how does she do it? How does she do it? <clears throat> and the the smell of death. So we're gonna get into that here. The question I have most often asked is how does she do it? Yes, that is the question. People ask questions like that. Even people who seem pretty cool seem to have open minds. But then when you tell them, they say, that's very interesting. Then don't want to have much to do with me. I don't mind telling people how I do it. It doesn't matter to me. But anyone adept sexually shouldn't have to ask. People have misconceptions that there has to be penetration for sexual gratification, which is bull. The most sensitive part of a woman is the front area anyway, and that is what needs to be stimulated. Besides, there are different aspects of sexual expression. Touchy-filly, 69, even holding hands. Wait, hold on, hold on. Pause, pause. Commentary time. Wait, 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 wait. I understand what you say there. Different sexual aspects of sexual expressions. Touchy-filly, 69, even holding hands. Is she implying that she's 69 with a corpse? How is that possible? At what is she talking about? It did she get on top of a corpse and gyrate her uh, her lower body on the chin on the lips? Is that what she's talking about? I think that's what she's talking. This is insane in the membrane over here, but this is we're just getting started, folks. We're just getting started. I hope you have a hard, stiff drink. No pun intended, but I hope you have a stiff drink on hand. I don't have any. I'm going sober. Cold turkey. I want the DTs to come in so I can hallucinate and see some things. No, no. No, I take shrooms for that. No. Anyway, let's go back to the interview here. <clears throat> the body is just lying there. 
but it has what it takes to make me happy. The cold, the aura of death, the smell of death, the funeral surrounding, it all contributes. The interview asks, interviewer asks, the smell of death? And Karen indulges? Sure, I find the odor of death very erotic. There are death odors and then there are death odors. Now you get your dead body that's been floating in the bay for two weeks or a burn victim, that doesn't attract me much. But a freshly embalmed corpse is something else. There's also attraction to blood. When you're on top of a body, it tends to purge blood out of its mouth. When you're making passionate love, you would have to be there, I guess. Oh my God. Commentary time. You would have to be there. I imagine you would have to be there. What in the world? Now, I said before, young men, right? She said that she likes to have intercourse with young men. Well, does she? is there more to that? Well, yes, there is, actually. There is a little bit more to it. Let me see if we can find it here. I had this saved up. Where is it now? Oh. Oh, man. Where is the article? Oh, my God. I had it saved. Where'd it go? Oh, 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 oh. Here, here, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. I'll put it on the screen so that way you know I'm reading this. And here we go. We're going to read this this part of the art, this, this article here about... Uh, Greenlee's story. He says, uh, but Greenlee's story doesn't end here. Uh, she got a taste for fame, and in a few years later, she gave an interview to Jim Borden. Okay, let me talk about that. Um, and next paragraph here. But because Karen really liked cute guys in the interview done to the heights of the AIDS crisis, she l- laments how her target audience tends to be sick. She goes into the group I find attractive, young men in their 20s, are the ones who are dying of AIDS. So she was into young men in their 20s that died of AIDS. That died of AIDS. So you could also say she was... uh, What is that term for the people who are chasing for the AIDS virus? Uh, There's a term for that. I forgot what it's called. You can let me know in the comment in the commentary on the podcast or in the in the YouTube comments section. Um, wow, bug chasers, right? Bug chasers. Now, being that the body is dead and in, but embalmed, so it's not that's going to pause a de- decomposition process. The I wonder. I don't think the AIDS virus would still be alive and thriving in that blood. I would hope not. Why did I just say that? I said I hope not. Wishing that at least she wouldn't have that sort of risk. It doesn't matter. Really, you know, she's engaging in this bizarre, dark, messed up behavior. <sighs> she wasn't spared from AIDS by anything godly. That's for sure, is what I'm saying. All right. Let's get back into this uh, this interview. Hmm. <clears throat> Now, let me get into the part here. It was very interesting. I did skim to this interview before. There's a part of how she got into necrophilia and other things about it. Because you might be asking, wait a second, Mr. Deadman. Is this a one-off case? This has to be right. How often is necrophilia? Well, it just so happens, according to Karen Greenlee, quite prominent. Happens more often than you think. And um, I don't doubt her. I don't doubt her at all. In this situation, I think she's telling the truth. Why not? Uh, She has nothing else to lose at this point. Uh, Let's see. She talks about that here. Uh, Do you miss working at funeral homes? I believe this is the one. Okay, let me see if that's the one there. Uh, let's see. Doing this live in the moment. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Um, The interviewer asked, Jim Warren asked her, there seems to be a strong camaraderie uh, between morticians. Almost like a secret society. And she says, very much so. Morticians are very 
tight with each other because most people won't have anything to do with them. I used to find if I went to a party, I would always be introduced like, this is Karen, she's a mortician, but they don't say, hey, here's Karen, she's a secretary, she's a, a veterinary assistant or anything. A lot of people are under the misconception that morticians are very straight, very somber. And if they ever went back to the prep room and heard all the jokes that are cracked, it would blow that theory right out of the window. And he asked, okay, did any of those morticians ever testify for or against you in the trial? And she says, one funeral director testified on behalf of funeral practices. And he was asked how often necrophilia occurs. And he said, it almost unheard of in this profession. And she further explains, yes, uh, after the interviewer asked, that's a major lie. She says, yes, definitely. Necrophilia is more prevalent than most people imagine. Funeral homes just don't report it. There was one place. I mean, in, in, pause here. Pause here. I uh, know uh, people on YouTube. Uh, I'm putting on the list to run reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm trying here with what best I can. You could say I'm a little distracted by this story. Now. Why would a funeral home report an incident of necrophilia? Think about that for a second. Let's say someone working at the funeral home walks in and you know and sees someone someone who works there, a mortician, banging a corpse. Why would they report that? They report that guess guess what funeral home is gonna lose business. That's right. The funeral home that reported it. So they could save business by just making sure it stays buried. Okay, but what about that mortician? Well, you know, are they going to get rid of them? They probably should, but they won't. If they get rid of them, what could he say about that funeral home? Oh, maybe there's NDA. Okay. What if he doesn't care... <laughs> what if he feels like he has nothing left to lose? You know? He could only he could only take so much from somebody. If they have no money left to give, you could still try to sue them, but they have nothing to give. Okay? All right. So what I'm saying is I I I I can believe that it happens more often than we think. And it's probably happening right now where your grandmommy, grandpappy, uh, or maybe your uncle or aunt are being buried, some loved one. You better hope that they're not hot. You better hope that they're not hot. Think about this. How many hot bombshell women go through a funeral home and have not been violated? Think about that. Because who would stop them? Who would stop a mortician from... Uh, Taking her out or giving her a ride. Who would stop it? Someone who's good and honest? Okay. Someone with integrity? So now we're just hoping there's integrity, right? There's no one who would stop it, right? I mean, look, I'm, I'm just asking here. I know it's uncomfortable. Probably don't want to hear it. Probably don't want to entertain it. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying who's going to stop it. We already know the funeral home is not going to stop it. The most they'll do is maybe like the Catholic Church change location. Okay, man, maybe you need to go to this other home. <laughs> okay? You don't want to get the word out. We need to protect the business. I am not surprised by this. But let's let's read more into the interview. Uh, and here we go, guys, on YouTube. There you go. It's on the screen. That way you know I'm reading. <clears throat> she goes, uh, at another place I was working, this guy came up to me and said, someone's been messing with the body. It looks like they were trying to fuck the body. I said, oh, my goodness, really? I think they figured it out later. I know they know how. I know they know now. <laughs> One mortician I worked with. Used to like to uh, trocar, a, a large hollow needle used to uh, suction fluids out from corpses and push it inside the male cadaver's dick. And it's say, oh, look, the corpse got a boner. 
Uh, this guy was really weird. Uh, commentary here. Uh, that's that's like the pot calling the kettle black there. Okay. You can't really call that guy being weird if you're weird yourself. Goes on to say, I think he had some necrophilic tendencies. Uh, he'd get real upset if they weren't any female bodies to work on. He'd start pacing. I caught him one time in the prep room. He said he was just taking a pee in the hopper at the end of the table. And he was just pulling up his pants when I walked in. I said, I won't tell if you don't. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, you th Hold on. Commentary time. Like I said, you think these perverted morticians are going to rat each other out? You think they're going to rat each other out? They both like, they like screwing dead bodies. Oh my God. Uh, the interviewer asked, so you said you were once caught in the act of necrophilia once? And she says, Karen says, yeah. I had tried to kill myself and was living in a halfway house a couple of blocks from the funeral home. I decided to go to the mausoleum and try to kill myself again. The mausoleum had a door connecting it to the mortuary. Uh, I was sitting in there real depressed and when just for the hell of it, I decided to try running my driver's license along the edge of the door and click. It opened and popped open. I couldn't believe it. So I tried it again and the door popped open again. I went into the prep room and there happened to be a body in there. I, I had me some fun. I did some things. I forgot all about killing myself and told the folks at the halfway house that I stayed the night with friends. I went in there several times. Sometimes there were absolutely no bodies. So I turned around and snuck back out. I usually went in the back door. Interesting. Uh, about a week later, I snuck back into the funeral home and I was in the on the prep table having a good old time when all of a sudden I felt like there was somebody nearby. Next thing, next thing, I heard people walking down the hallway. I quietly jumped uh, off the table and threw the, the sheets back over the body. My clothes were in quite a state of disarray. I had blood on me and everything else. It had been an autopsy case. Oh my. God, I'm going to continue reading and I'll do my commentary. There was a casket with a lid open on the side casket room. So I ran and hid behind it. This cas the casket was on a church truck, so they couldn't see me. But they could see my legs. It was a man and a woman. They were standing there saying, who are you? What are you doing here? One of them said to the other, you go get the gun and call the cops. I'll stay down here. I knew I only had one chance then, so I busted out and ran. I knew the layout of the place, so I ran down the hall and out the place, out the cemetery. At the same time, I still had a friend who worked at the funeral home. He said somebody broke into the funeral home. You know who it was you. They put in an alarm after that. Uh, I, think, uh, I think they called the police, but there were never any charges. I'm sure they didn't want the publicity. And uh, she says that there was last time it got very close, except for that I broke it into a few tombs. Okay. Okay. Hold on. There's a lot to say here. There's a lot to say here. So she was going to kill herself. So all of us that are slut shaming her, kink shaming her, um, are probably in the wrong here. Because if she didn't have sex with these dead bodies, uh, she herself would have been dead. Think about that. So if you say she shouldn't have done this, you're saying that she should have just offed herself. Well, 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 look at that. You know what I say to that? You know, if she did do that, if, if she did pull through and was, a, a, you know, went all the way with her her, her idea she already had before she broke in, then none of these bodies would have been violated. No. You know, there's that. Um, so maybe, maybe you got to listen to the voices in your head is what I'm saying there. 
Maybe there's a time and place where it's best to listen to the voices in your head so you prevent further damage and further harm. Maybe the voices are, you know, maybe you don't want to hear it, but maybe you, it's either that or go get professional help. Go get professional help. Or go get help. But Mr. Damon, she got help. She wrote, she wrote a couple of corpses. Well, maybe that could be therapy then. You know what? What do I know? I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional. Maybe writing cold dead bodies is therapeutic for some. I've seen Clerks, the original. She seemed to have a good time. That was just a movie. Maybe it was based on real life events. I don't know. Uh, I take this case. Maybe it is. <sighs> Use my body to keep you alive. Maybe, maybe that was going on here. This is so interesting. It's sick. It is. So macabre. I, I think that really fits this. Mm, mm, mm. Now the interviewer asked more about, uh, have you seen changes in people's attitude towards necrophilia? And she says, yeah, when I came out here, I noticed it. It's almost a fad. They're not really necrophiles, but pseudo necrophiles, like a death cult. But there are probably a lot of people who would like it if they had the opportunity. Great. Great commentary time. Uh, kind of like what I said about these the Twitch thoughts, the horror thoughts. Twitch thoughts? That's a Twitch. Horror thoughts on Twitter. I mean, not Twitch thoughts. They're a whole different thing. But horror thoughts on Twitter. You know what I'm talking about. You see them. They look very great. They look very uh, uh, interesting. And I do follow some. I'm friendly with some. I had some on the show before. They have only fans. I, you know, you do you. But, you know, they will pretend to be uh, flirting with the dead and all that. Um, why not just go the full mile? You know, don't pretend. Go all the way. Go all the way. Stop acting and actually do it. <laughs> what am I promoting here? Oh, my God. This is crazy. This is crazy. And, and if you do, I'll end up talking about it. So it'd be great. It'd be great. Um. <clears throat> wow. But the question I have to ask you guys is, uh, is it something you would do? Something you would entertain? I mean, if it's on the table and no one knew, would you? No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> Just all, that's all I can say. Let's read the rest of this interview here. Uh. <clears throat> It goes on to say, Jim Jim Morton says, perhaps there is a or ask, perhaps there is a vast network of necrophiles who, for the lack of a form, will never know each other's existence. Well, social media has changed that, I'm sure. And she goes on to say, well, there's the Lila uh, Windows Group, American Associated Necrophiles Research and Enlightenment. Are you kidding me? There is a what? I learned that. I didn't skim. I noticed that when I skimmed through this interview. There's a whole group, American Association of Necrophilic Research and Enlightenment. Oh my God. How do I join this? Just for research, just for research, for content for the show. Okay. That's all it is, guys. That's all it is. I swear. To God. <laughs> Say that. <laughs> oh, man. This is some stuff here. This is the story of Karen Greenlee. Karen Greenlee. All she was, all she really was, was a simple apprentice and bomber. She worked at a mortuary. And she had insatiable lust for boning dead bodies. She loved it. It was an addiction. She couldn't quit it. She couldn't stop. You know? Some people were addicted to cocaine. Uh, some people were addicted to gambling. I never thought I would ever hear someone being addicted to riding corpses. Banging the dead. But apparently that is a thing. If you made it all the way to this inn... You've learned quite a bit, and I bet you're um, in disbelief of everything you heard. You probably want me to tell you that this is all fiction, but it's absolutely not. This is all real. 
100% real. At least the story about Karen and what she said in the interview is real. I don't know what to tell you with that. You learned. You learned something. That's why you listen to this show. The horror show. The dead man horror show. It's not anything else. It's the dead man horror show. You want a horror show? I'm going to give you a horror show. And you got it. You got it. With that said, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. You take it easy.